When your spouse gets angry, do they yell at you, call you names, use foul or degrading language to you? People ask me all the time, is that abuse? I mean, where's the line? Is that domestic abuse? Should I be calling the police because my husband or my wife yells at me or calls me names? Uh, how bad does it have to be to be considered abuse? In this video, we're going to talk about whether that's abuse or not, or where is the line, or how you can create a boundary when that's happening. Um, and my method for dealing with a partner who's being a verbally abusive um, called the RIP method. We're going to dive into that today and, um, and figure out what you can do to change this behavior. I'm Victoria McCooey. I'm a transformation coach, a motivational speaker, and the creator of the Reclaim Your Power system. I help people every day in these situations who are dealing with abusive spouses um, and also people who are already engaged in divorces that become very contentious with a narcissistic spouse. So let's talk a little bit about domestic violence. I mean, I know a little bit about it because I worked for a decade as a volunteer helping victims of domestic violence. So I have been, had extensive training in this area. I also had my own domestic violence issue in my first marriage. So I do know a lot about this topic. And let me tell you what I, what I know for sure. It doesn't start out as punching or hitting. It starts out verbally. It starts out or or with the silent treatment, or, you know, it, it, it evolves, it snowballs. So is it domestic violence if uh, your spouse is verbally abusive? Well, it's, it's on the road to becoming that way. So it does have to be dealt with in the very beginning because it's never going to get better. It's only going to get worse. If you don't change your behavior and how you react, then the abuse will just continue to grow and become more severe. So what should you do if your husband or wife starts yelling at you uh, regularly? I mean, a one-off, we've all lost our tempers, we've all had a bad day, we take it out on the ones we love. I understand that. You know the difference though. This is not a one-off situation for you. This is not someone losing their temper and then apologizing and it very, very rarely happening. You know the difference. So if this is something that is aggressive and mean-spirited and ugly, um, then if you don't address it, it will grow. So I've developed a way to remember what you should do by calling it the RIP method. The R stands for resist the urge to retaliate. If you just start yelling back, now it's just going to escalate and there's no end in sight. You're saying this is okay. You're saying I'm going to engage in this sort of behavior with you. Um, I'm not only not going to try to stop you, I'm going to jump right in there. All right, so I know we all are tempted to fight fire with fire, but this is one time when it really won't work for you. It just will become more regular, more severe, and, and never ending. The I stands for identify your boundary. You have to communicate to the abusive partner what your, where your line in the sand is, right? You have to say, I will not engage in this argument, conversation, exchange, whatever it is, if you're going to use that tone, use that language, um, if you degrade me, I will not engage. So you're clearly identifying what you will not accept. So you identify your boundary and you walk away. If it continues, you walk away. If you have to put yourself in a room and close the door and put earphones on, whatever. But 
you do not engage. The P stands for plan your next steps. So you also have to communicate what the plan is for moving forward to the partner who's being verbally abusive. So that looks like this. When you are calmer or when you want to speak to me in a civilized tone or when you want to um, refrain from using that language, then I will have this conversation. That is your plan. So that is the RIP method. Now I hear what you're saying. You're saying oh, he's going to absolutely go ballistic or she's going to destroy something in her path or whatever outcome you're anticipating if you set that boundary whatever repercussion you have to face, right? This is a person who's being abusive. This, you're afraid they'll retaliate with even worse behavior. Well, if it becomes violent, then you have to call the police. A normal person would check themselves. A normal person would say, all right, I, I'm gonna calm down because I'm getting out of control. Or would even say, I don't know what got into me. I'm sorry. I'm going to I'm going to rein this in. That is what a normal non-disordered person would say or do, right? Someone who can't control their emotions, someone who is enraged has some type of personality disorder and you are not going to fix it by engaging in it. Um, so if that becomes the scenario, if that's what's going on, if it becomes a dangerous situation, then you need to call the police. And now I can just hear my client's voices in my head saying, well, that that's going to make him even madder. Well, that is not your fault. You have to protect yourself. So if he gets even madder because you call the police, then you call the police again. I mean, this can become a very serious situation um, and you need protection. So you do have a voice, you do have power, you just have to use it. So use your power, reclaim your power, set your boundary, show the abuser what you will and will not accept, and most importantly, stay consistent. If this is you, if you're in a relationship with a narcissistic or abusive or otherwise toxic spouse, and you're wondering if this is abuse, if it's um, something that you can set a boundary around um, or what your next steps might be, please book a free call with me. I would love to help. There will be a link in the description where you can go right to my calendar and find a time that works for you. I hope you found this information valuable. If you liked this video, would you please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because that is how this video is going to get in front of more people who really need to get this information. Thanks so much for watching. I've linked some other videos here that I thought you might also like to watch, so I hope I see you in the next video.